Hi, I'm Demita Nocton, and I'm here to tell you about some works of literary fiction that I loved this year, and one very special memoir. I'm going to begin with probably my favorite book for 2020, and that sang a lot. It's Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. And this book is set in the not too distant future. It's a novel and climate change has occurred and the populations of the birds on earth have pretty much been decimated. This is the story of a rather troubled young Irish woman who's trying to resolve some issues of her past. And she has decided that she wants to follow the last flock of Arctic terns on their final migratory path. She goes to Greenland, um, finagles her way onto a fishing boat uh, it, with the story that they will find fish along the way if they follow these birds. And you go back and forth, you get a little bit of her past along with the story as she makes her journey. This is so well written and exquisite. My next novel is Sea Wife by Amity Gage. This book crept onto the scene. I hadn't heard of it. A dear friend and very valued customer read it and recommended it, so I had to see for myself, and I can't stop selling this book. It's the story of a family in Ohio, and they decide to take a year to sail the Caribbean. Uh, the problem is they do not have sailing experience um, at all. So needless to say, this becomes the story of a marriage. This book is so cleverly, cleverly written. Um, you'll love what the author does with this. I couldn't put it down and I have people coming back and thanking me for this recommendation. Transcendent Kingdom by Yah Jassy. I had to take my sticky note off that. Yah Jassy is the author of Homegoing, which is a magnificent novel from 2016. This is a modern day story of a Ghanaian immigrant family living in the United States. Um, and it starts to deal with their struggles and strife uh, trying to make it in the country. It becomes the story of depression. Um, we have a family battling addiction and mental illness, and the young girl in this family turns to faith, and she uses that to help her survive her childhood, but then as she grows older, she becomes very involved with science, and she's a leading uh, neurophysiologist physiologist and she's doing some major research to learn about addiction and mental health and she's really on the cusp of learning all the things that would help her better understand her childhood. This is magnificent, very, very well researched, beautiful book. We can't think of North Carolina authors without Ron Rash appearing. Um, North Carolina's chock full of wonderful writers. Ron Rash is one of the top. Um, this is a collection of short stories with a novella at the end. Ron Rash is famous for his depiction of the uh, Appalachian life and the very truth in what that looks like. And this is a collection of short stories that take place in different time periods. But the very last story is actually a novella, and it is the sequel to um, Serena. If you've read that novel years ago by Ron Rash, you're going to see that she's back, and she's as evil as ever, and she makes an appearance at the end of this book. Loved this book. Alice Hoffman uh, has a new novel out called Magic Lessons. Uh, this is actually the prequel to Practical Magic, and it takes you way back in time to the early 1600s to an English village um, where there's a young girl born who seems to have these very special gifts of witchcraft. She travels to the Caribbean and ends up in Salem, Massachusetts as she follows her heart and the love of her life, she thinks. Alice Hoffman does a marvelous job of 
uh, telling this story, uh, featuring this time period. There's all sorts of potions and remedies and cures in this. You'll probably want to plant your own herb garden after you read this book. Treat yourself. Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. Oh, I just got chill bumps thinking about this book. Um, you have to read it. It left me uneasy, and it left me thinking about a lot of things. It's set um, in a very remote Airbnb um, on Long Island. There's a middle-class family from New York City who's come to spend some time there for a few weeks, just a vacation, um, get away from it all. In the middle of the night, there's a knock on the door, and when they open it, they find an elderly African-American couple who are the owners of this luxurious home. And the story sort of takes an odd turn. They claim they were in New York at, at the symphony and there was a massive blackout and they knew that they couldn't uh, navigate their building without electricity. So they decided that the safe place for them would be to come to their home out on Long Island. Well, the story starts getting more and more involved and it's a bit of an uneasy relationship that they have because the original family doesn't want to leave, but we learn that there may be a cyber attack and you start to question all sorts of things as you're reading this. And are we prepared for what life would be like if we were no longer on the grid? Um, very well written, extremely compelling. The Cold Millions by Jess Walter was fabulous. I don't always read historical fiction, but when I do, it had better be good, and this one was. It's extremely literary. It's set in a very different time period in Spokane, Washington, and it's during the early 1900s, and there's a labor party um, movement there. We have two brothers who live the life of hobos and try to live every day just making a dollar. You get their story. You see the disparity between the ruling class there and uh, you see these brothers get involved with the Labor Party movement. There are actual historical characters involved. I couldn't put this down. It is extremely well written and extraordinarily well researched. Very impressive. The Cold Millions. The last book that I wanted to feature reads like fiction, but this is a memoir. The Dragons, the Giant, the Women by Way to Moore is gorgeous. It's about a little girl who's living in Liberia during a time of civil unrest and some things start happening and her family flees. She's with her dad and siblings. Her mother has gone to America to study um, during this time period and this family is racing for their lives and she's really too little to understand exactly what she's seeing. So you get this story. And then you also get the mother's story in New York as she realizes that she has lost contact with her family and becomes extremely uh, worried and extremely involved. And you fast forward in time to when the whole family is together in America and the struggles that they still have as they try to navigate life in the United States as immigrants. Thank you.